And Freddy, the floor, the virtual floor is yours. All right, fantastic. Thank, thank you so much for the introduction. I really like the, the way you introducing myself and you let people enjoy themselves during the conference. So, so I hope everyone and everybody is, is, is safe. So, so it's really my pleasure here to present uh, kind of an overview of, of what expandable machine learning is and give you some directions on where it should be going and where is it going now and, and, and what have been the recent research work in this particular field, which is taking in more and more traction. Uh, so, so, so let, let's go for it. So, so move to the second slide and I'll, I'll give you a bit of scope. So, so first, when we, we talk about explainable AI, it's, it, it's really part of a bigger umbrella. So it's, it's a part of a bigger umbrella where people talk about responsible AI, trustable AI, and, uh, and trustable AI and ethical AI even. So, so it's really a field where people, uh, well, not necessarily computer scientists or technical people, it's much more when business people and, uh, and people from the ethical side, they see AI taking more and more space in the news and the media and they see the achievement done and they say, okay, if, if AI is, 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 is reaching to its main goal, which is building autonomous systems, then where is the human in, in, such, uh, in such an environment? And they say, well, if we build such systems, we, we need as human, as, uh, as part of as our society, if you want to get them in our life, we need to trust them. And, uh, and they need somehow to, to fit some ethics and they need to be responsible. Uh, they will need a way to, to, to make them uh, well, valid and, and, and robust. They need to also preserve the privacy that we have. And, and all of those elements is taking more and more space. So, so depending on your background and where you're coming from, you, you may think it's, it's an overstatement to say, okay, well, well, I'm a computer scientist and, well, and, and for me, while building such system, it, it's so difficult and so, so hard that, I mean, saying that oh, trustable, it might, be, it, might be, it might be too much. Actually, we're going so fast those days and the technology is evolving so, so quickly and having an impact on everybody. And, and we see that now AI is making new, the top of news and media every, every single day. And top, top tech companies, they do provide uh, fantastic technologies. So, so I think it's, it's important that uh, AI is, is more responsible and explainable. So, so and the explanation is really the rational behind when you build a model. So if we talk about machine learning uh, system, when you build a model, then how you make it uh, explainable. So persons that use the results or that use the prediction models, then they have an understanding on how it uh, can be used and how it can have an impact on, on people and, and maybe hurt some 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 de some some people through some tough decisions. So it, it's it's really that field of how you make it interpretable for for human and uh, and then how we can we can use it and and that and that's a very core. Uh, and core challenges, I and mean, it's particularly in industry because it's it's now it's touching uh, well business industries, but it's also end user industry, so B two C and B two B and and B two G uh, for government. So it's really touching lots and lots of people. So so I think it's really an, an interesting topic with lots of advancements over the last couple of months or, or years and more and more traction. So so I have a, a very quick def quick definition. I will go more later on. on on the on the on the what is it exactly? Uh, but it's if I just read those few lines, it's just an explanation in AI. It's aimed to create a suite of techniques that produce more explainable models. Uh, so while maintaining a high level of searching, learning, planning, reasoning, performance, optimization, accuracy, precision, and enable human users to understand appropriately trust and effectively manage the imaging generation of AI system. So, so as you see, it's it, well, it, it, it say a lot, but it doesn't really, really clarify things. So, to, and and my goal here today is at the end of the session, you should have an understanding of of what explanation in AI is. And usually, when people say I'm working on explainable AI, uh, it's mainly explainable machine learning, and and AI is much more than than machine learning. And I, I'll have a quiz on that later on, and also have a, a clarification of, of 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 what is it. So a bit of motivation. So, so you might be consumers of uh, of Netflix, uh, Facebook, 
and um, all of those uh, well business to business to customers uh, and they and they, they provide more and more content for for us to make our life easier or, or more fun uh, or more much more interactive with others so i mean they are very fantastic uh, um, platform that and, and and those platforms they use the data that we do provide so so when we like a movies uh, they well they capture those ratings and uh, when we take pictures and we tag persons uh, they all of this information and they try to to detect uh, well well network of friends and uh, and it, it, it's a very nice technology and those technologies because they're relying on so much data that we do provide as users uh, they they're very fantastic, but they 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 mainly relying on on uh, heavily on machine learning and large amount of data and try to detect patterns for doing the right recommendation of a, uh, or doing the right tagging of a friend recommendation of a movie. Uh, so they 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 wait for doing such such work and they and they, and they keep going and increasing the accuracy. But then if we think about the explanation part, then when you get a movie recommended and when you get a, frat, a friend tagged in a particular picture, do you remind about the, the reason why it has been in, 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 the, in that particular way? Uh, well, at the end of the day, if they make a wrong recommendation, say Netflix give you a 99% uh, recommendation for a movie and you, you, and you watch it and it was not good, uh, well, worst case scenario, you 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 just lost an hour or two of your of your of your life uh, while watching that movie, but it doesn't really have a huge economical or societal impact. So, so 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 those companies they 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 might try to also fit in the explanation part, but from a societal and from an economical perspective, explanation is not really so much of a big deal. Um, but if you think about critical systems, which is much more the business to business, or, or when you embed systems uh, with much more intelligence, so if you if you if you look at the picture, that's a submarine, and there are officers here, there there are experts in uh, in and they try to detect uh, mines from the from the world war and try to detect them. So so it's a very dedicated uh, task, and they try to remove them from the from the sea. So. And they and they look at pictures and they look at uh, many different uh, things from from sonars that are embedded embedded in those in those submarines and they try to uh, well remove them and try to well first detect them and if you think about the task it's it's, a, it, 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 at the end of the day it's a it's it's a machine learning task plus a human task and uh, if they if they remove uh, first the wrong thing they might spend lots of time. And and they and they and they need to understand exactly, who, I mean, the way the mine is positioned and how to take it. Is it if it is a mine, and then and then to be very careful. So if they make the wrong move, it may have huge impact. They they they, they may they may destroy the submarine, and and it's it and it's definitely not good. So and they are critical system because they you have you have life threatening situations here. And the same about trains. We we talk more and more about uh, self-driving cars, and and we we also do the same now for for trains. And we have the concept of autonomous trains. So and the same if you equip the train with with machine learning system for taking decision about stopping, accelerating, or or, or, or minimizing the speed, uh, then if you make if the system make the wrong decision, it may have huge impact. So then. I wanted to show those two pictures because um, it, whatever happened, if something bad happening, especially if something bad is happening, well, the authorities, the insurance will get back and say, okay, what was the situation? Why, why, why did you? Why did the system did such a move? And what's the reason behind? And if you have only a system that just uh, will capture informations and just say, okay, that was the scenery, but there's no really reason on which action has been made and why it, it's difficult to to then to 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 make the system somehow um, accountable for for what happened and then and then you have all of those questions about who is responsible the one who who built the system the one who operated the one that supported it. so that, that many underlying questions so explanation is very crucial as a very first step so at least we we get system prepared and human prepared to to have a, a rational behind 
so 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 that's only my my only marketing slide uh it won't take more than 30 seconds they just say that my company is operating on critical systems so we we equipped uh, airplanes we create satellites and uh, and, and trains and uh, and we do cyber security and they're all domains where uh if you want to uh, disrupt the industry, uh, machine learning is definitely the right way to go because we have lots of data that capture satellite and trajectory and maybe collision. And the same for planes and trains. We have lots of data captured from radars, cameras, optical cameras, sensors, lidars. So they're all of those uh, sensors that capture digital information that we can use for building models. And uh, and in the end of the day, they are critical system. And we, if the system make a decision, we still have the human in the loop, and we need to provide the explanation for the operators, for the managers, for the government. For for there are many different parties that needs to rely and to trust on the system. And and at the at the first step when we try to embed those system with machine learning, the question is, well, how do you make sure that there's the right decision? And then if something wrong. Who is accountable for that, and how we can um, f well trace back what, what was going on, and that's why explanation is really at the core of our industry. So moving to next slide, but it's not only uh, critical systems. You may have heard about the Compass uh, software uh, systems in the US, where they try to um, detect the risk of um, of coming another crime so people get sentenced and before releasing them they, they analyze the data that they have so they have historical information of the persons uh, they capture information about uh, so, some some background and they and they, they use the system they really use the system uh, so it was in the in the Florida state and they just try to to give paroles uh, or, or or just uh, detecting at least the, the risk of person to uh, to commit a crime again, and they noticed that the the, the while well, the system was biased toward the race, uh, so and then they give uh, um, for similar populations uh, they were more they give more risk to to a subpopulation. So if you look at the different kind of race and populations in the database, uh, the the system was doing more errors in doing the predictions. Uh, compared to others, so it was completely unfair, and they and they were using it for for quite some time un uh, until uh, some some recent work have been published and say that the the system is is unfair. And the same for uh, in, you you can see in 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 different fields like uh, in 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 credit uh, in credit approval, uh, you you may end up in similar situations in. Uh, in in job and and the, so Amazon has, has had some issues with their system and they they remove it for doing selection and it was biased towards the gender because uh, some people were underrepresented and those underrepresentation make that when they do the prediction they don't have enough sample and they and they make much more mistakes so when they measure the final accuracy of the system uh, that make them uh, well towards more the largest populations and try to optimize and and the machine learning system is. It's an optimization. It's, it's an optimization system. So they, if the largest populations that where they would the that's where they can gain highest higher accuracy. That's what what they will try to optimize. So so nothing bad really about the, the the system, but the system was biased. So so you need you need to change the way things are done. So so it's more from explanation to much more the bias and the ethical of our system. So if you go XAI in a nutshell. Um, so what you see on the top is it's it, it's a DARPA pictures from from the US, the different departments so that say, okay, today XAI is about you have data, you try to learn the patterns, and you 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 learn a model so through algorithm. Uh, so you may use a neural nets that try to learn a model, and then you try to detect an obstacle. And then the output is well, there is an obstacle, uh, but then at the end, as I mentioned, you have a users, and the human may say. Okay, why did you end up with that particular thing, and how you make sure that's right, and uh, what's the error? The error we may have it, we may have the confidence, but then when do you fail? What if I change some part? And you may have lots of questions, and usually it's it's not an interaction that you have with the system. It's you have the data, uh, you train on it, and then uh, you have another picture. You try to do the prediction, and you have the one shot information, and that's it. And the next. 
phase, which is the one you see on the bottom side, is well, you have much more information about, oh, this is bad prediction because those particular elements that you see on the picture are representative of something which is an obstacle, which might stop a train at a particular speed. So you have much more information. And that information is not necessarily coming from the picture. As you will see later on, uh, we, the, the, the community and also us design systems that now go much deeper than only providing uh, well, colored maps with uh, but much more insightful information and sometimes knowledge. So, so that's that's really the question: how we move from the top the top end picture to the bottom end picture. And an example of a of an of an XAI system is a system where you do have interactions. So, first step. You detect a fish, machine learning say that that I predicted the fish, and usually you stop it and that that's done. And then second step is well, the user may say, okay, why? And the system may say, oh, you have uh, green regions that arc with four fish, and while the red pulls towards dark. So uh, the based on the classification task that you need to do, the, you have different uh, di di well, different part of the picture which are responsible for for triggering um, some particular flight, and then. You may still continue the discussion and say, hmm, it seems like it might be recognizing uh, animal texture. Which training example are most influential? So as a, as a machine learning model is based on training data, and then you say, okay, it's, it's pretty close to those examples. So that's why I've been recognizing this as, a, as this particular species. And then you may have another one say, okay, okay, that's, that's right. Why if you remove the background, maybe you took the, the decision and maybe the background, which is about water, make you that uh, the only fish that you have is the animal. So then uh, here we go. And then you can remove it. And then you can keep going and going. You can say, okay, what if I uh, remove some part of the of, of the fish and what might be the solution? And and then you get much more, much more, much more trust in the system. And that's an example where it's, it, it's not a one shot explanation. It's it's you keep it away and and you should be have more confidence and then here over time you will see you should see that the user the user is trusting at 50 percent up to maybe 70 or 80 and and that's and that's probably the way xai system should go and they are very interesting work from 2018. Uh, so very quickly so so machine learning well first it's not only about deep learning and neural nets uh, uh, i mean the, the bubble or range that you see on the very top it's it's really about a family of of different algorithms so from random forest decision tree uh, to exibus families to linear models which are much simpler and much easier to interpret because they they basically um, a, a set of mathematical mathematical formulas weighted by the features that they have in the data representation and that's much easier to impre uh, to represent and as you see um, the more obscure you get usually the higher accurate you are. So by, by obscure, I mean it's a neural net, you have lots of layers, and uh, if you want to go very in the in the, the different layers and features of them, it's very difficult to, to try to capture what, what is responsible. You, you, you can still do it, but uh, as you go deeper and deeper, it, it's very difficult, and you have lots of uh, uh, stochastic elements in the neural net, so it's difficult to, uh, to have a clear view but towards the linear model, it's much easier. But usually for large amount of data, well, I'm really talking about large amount of data, usually neural nets, they, they're much better in navigating uh, the, 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 the stochastic dimensions and figure out much accurate models. So here, it just gives you an overview of where models are situated. It's not the perfect pictures. It does change if you change your machine learning task. If it's a classification regression, it might change if you change your data sets. Uh, so, so it they, and, and it change it change a lot. So don't see this as a fix, but it it give a, a nice overview of what and uh, where accuracy is and where explanation here on this particular chart. Uh, so XAI objectives, so supporting industrialization of AI at scale. So I mentioned trust and responsibility, uh, but when we talk about explanation, it's really the, the loop of, of, of AI systems. I mean, if first, you, you, usually if, you, if you're building a machine learning model, you start doing training. And, and even at training time, uh, based on the, uh, on, on the result you get at the different epochs, you, 
you may want to debug and visualize the model. And that's part of the very first step of explanation. You want to see if your training data has the, has the, has the, has the right distribution first and, 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 and explanation. And you have techniques for, for capturing explanation during um, for that particular distribution. You may want to evaluate the model when you're much more at testing phase. And, uh, and when you deploy, then you have live data coming in. And again, you may want to still have uh, some, some, some quality check on the explanation and what's, what's the result. And as the data might change, the distribution of the data might change, you may want to get uh, the explanation in real time because the, the, the one that you have at training is differing from what you may get at deploying time. And that the predictions, A-B testing, so when the user will pick different results, uh, maybe they get the right predictions, but people might prefer different things. So, and then you you might combine this with some A/B testing and then then monitoring to see how the person is interacting with with the result given and debugging. So, uh, so models might get bigger and may get corrupted over time uh, because of misuse. And that and that's also very important to to, to mention is misuse and uh, and try to. Uh, to make um, a machine learning systems failing. Uh, so by sending adversarial examples, so that it's, it's, it, it's also something you, you want to, to, to look at. And, and maybe if you have some, um, well, signal sense for, for tricking your, your models, that's something you want to be aware of. And if you get the explanation, then you might be able to fix it. And, and that will give you a, a better coverage of your model. And, and that's really, that's really what machine learning is, is you want generalizations. And if you have patch a different cycle of your system, then you can, um, if you are able, if the system is able to understand and capture, then you can add, add different patches at a different level of the life cycle of the system. So on the role of data in explainable AI. So explainable AI, uh, well, it, it's, it's, it's about any kind of data. Right? So, so if, you, if, you, if you are about images, usually explanation is, is something that you can visualize. Usually people is taking what we call silency map and you can see particular parts of the image that if you remove it, then it won't be classified here as walls, for example. Uh, for text, uh, it's, it's about the entities that you have. And then for tabular data, it's much more about the, 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 the field names and the, the informations uh, that you have, but just more on the textual, but much more on a structured way. So you, you may have a graph representations and it's maybe some entities, but they are related each, to each other. So, so then when you provide an explanation, maybe on the left hand side, if it's that captured as a graph, it's a subgraph and the picture is something that you can visualize. And in the text, there are entities. So, so when you think about explainable AI, depending on the data that you're dealing with, the explanation might be different. And the algorithm that you might need to use might be different also. You, there are agnostic uh, models that, that can be used, but it's, it's something that needs to be considered. So then if we discuss about the evaluation, uh, explanation is, 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 is a nice way to say, okay, that's something we need to go, but then how we do evaluate that the explanation is right. And that's a very tricky and complex question. And the reason why is because you have many different dimensions. Uh, so, so usually in machine learning, uh, the way it's done is you, you, remove some, you remove that part and you see if the model is still as accurate. And if it's still as accurate, that means it's not that important. And that importance is the factor of explanation. Uh, so, but if you think about explanation, it's not because something is important that, uh, well, it might be part of the explanation, but you, you should need to go further. I mean, it's not something you need to understand. Maybe it's important, but there's no way, that as, a, as a human, we can't really understand it. Uh, it's maybe too long, so it's not succinct enough. Maybe there's no way we can action it. So you, you give me back information that it's, 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 it's impossible for me to take action. If I give you an explanation to a question, I mean, you, 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 you take it and you use it for reformulate further questions or for explaining to other persons. So there's an action after the explanation. You, and here in machine learning or in, a, in AI broadly, you may want to use it for fixing your model. And, and, and that's an, an example. So you, need, you have these actions and reusable accuracy, as I mentioned, and completeness. So is the explanation complete enough? or you still need elements. So that's why when I mentioned the iteration step, the more information you give, 
from different perspective, the more complete you get about the picture of uh, of really? image. Yeah. All right. So so bear with me. Uh, I'll, I'll move towards a very interesting application. But first, XAI in AI in AI. It's not only machine learning. You have work on computer vision. You have work on um, um, on natural language processing. You have work on um, you have your work on game theory, on on, on planning, and, and multi-agent systems. So so AI is very broad. Now it's mainly machine learning and deep learning. But when you're solving an explainable AI topic, you're not only solving explainable machine learning. So so is this one thing you need to remember from this call? From this, from 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 this talk is explainable AI is not only about machine learning. The other field of AI they do care about explanation of why did I end up with such a planning? Why did I end up with relaxing that constraint in an optimization task? It's it's really about all of this other field, and you have many many uh, different uh, are, um, people working on this topic. So that's that's one thing I wanted to mention. So now uh, maybe a four minute perspective on on the role of knowledge graph uh, in, in explainable AI. So that's an application which has been built, which has been deployed and uh, and have a huge impact. And, and I'll explain you why. It's very, very easy to catch. So first, knowledge graph, it's a set of entities which are linked to each other. So my name is Freddy, and I'm giving a, note, a keynote at the conference. So I'm giving a keynote, it's, it's the subject, and the, at the conference is the object. And everything in the, in the world can be model in, in, in a triple sense. So just think a knowledge graph about a lot of information where you have the subject, predicate, and object. And the question is how you can use knowledge graph for combined with machine learning. And I'll, I'll give you a sense. So I'll squeeze, I'll squeeze those ones uh, and move to the application. So here, uh, object detection task. Uh, there's a boulder on the, on the whale track, uh, obvious, for, for, obvious for human. But if you apply, uh, um, we apply a very classic neural net, or what you will get is we'll get a lumber mill with a 59%. Uh, this is what, what you will get with a classic computer vision object detection task. And what it means, it means that there's a boulder and it means that there's a railway. Uh, so if you deploy this for on a way on, on a train, well, you may have big issues because the, uh, it won't detect that obstacle, which is not good, and you may get people hurt. So then if we say, okay, let's use existing explainable AI system. So as I mentioned, they are mainly coloring the, the, the pictures and we call it silency maps. And it's a lumber mill and it's 59% this object and, and the red part are why I get that particular element. Uh, unfortunately, that's no use for human because uh, the explanation is wrong and that not give me any insights. So, so, so it, it, the system is going completely off. So then how, then how I get, why I get this explanation. So if you look at the DBpedia of, of a lumber mill, it said the very first line in the comment is, so sawmill or, or lumber mill is a facility where logs are cut in lumber. So as a human, again, the system doesn't do such things, but as a human say, okay, this is the cut uh, which is in lumber. So, so, okay, so as a human, we can reason that, but the machine is not able to do any such thing. So, so what is missing, what's missing to capture that is to say, well, actually, well, the system you should not get it's it's not it's not cut into it's not it's not lumbers here. It what you're missing is really the context. Is you're missing the railway, you're missing the boulders, and actually there's only one lumber mill. So you should not capture this uh, in in that way. So get the context and and try to correct the computer vision task in um in in something with 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 using better context. So what we did is we say, um, so we, we try to uh, transition from what you see from the left hand side from what you see on the right hand side. And we try to basically make the boulder and the railway much with a much higher accuracy. And the way we did it is by using semantic representation. So, so in a very quick and short way, we capture the semantic representation of each and every object detected in the pictures. And if they co occurred in the same context in DBpedia pages, then we boost the scores. So the boulder, which is at the 9%, is boosted at 81 because boulder is in this landscape where you have lots of other uh, stones and, uh, and it's, it's, it's connected to uh, the, 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 the green areas. So, and you see description of boulders with all of these information. And the system will capture all these different objects. It'll say, is there any co occurrence? 
in the knowledge domains. And that knowledge domain, DBpedia, can be captured as a knowledge graph. And that's as simple as it is. You capture objects as a human, we do reason and we do see, uh, okay, that's a lumber mill. Uh, because of the shape and because of the context I have, and then I can I can definitely do the right classification. The system the system is not. So if we provide the right context, and the context is coming from the the semantic representation or the knowledge graph, and then you may end up with that graph representation, and then boosting the score. So when the system or when the train we get in that situation, the boulder and the railway which were completely off the picture, now they boost it. And the, and the nice way about that. You don't need to retrain your model. You just keep the model as it is. We still do bad prediction, but you boost it using semantic representation and uh, and much more at semantic meaning. And, and 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 that's the nice beauty of it. You don't need in real time to to retrain it. You just need to add this information and uh, and check the coherence, what you have in the graph and what you have in the picture. So conclusion. Uh, uh, explainable AI is motivated by real world application in AI. Uh, so it's definitely not a new problem. It's a reformation of past research challenges in AI. Uh, if you have been studied uh, in knowledge representation and reasoning, uh, where you try to detect facts from rules and, and assertion, uh, basically the explanation is the trace uh, of all the action which have been used. So it had been used from the, uh, from the 90s and the 80s, and they tried to already back at that time to solve this problem. Uh, so knowledge graph should be foundational for XAI. So, so the context is very important. I mean, if, if I show you pictures about things that you see, I mean, you relate element each other and say, those two elements make sense together. And, and, and basically this information is, well, it's not in the picture that's in our mind, in our experience. And you can get this information from Wikipedia, DPpedia, so extract the relevant structured information and try to recombine the two. Uh, that's that's try to what we try to to do, and and but we facing challenges in in in, in graph because you have uh, um, ambiguity of terms and mapping between the object that you see and the representation that you get. So the, you have mismatch and you need to solve such problems. Uh, but there are many industrial application already and they're crucial for AI and ad, and adoption in critical systems. Um, so, so why do we need knowledge graph? It's because this is not an explanation for an intelligent system. So what you see is not. We need more interpretations and something which is more actionable. So then think about how I can use it. So first, what you see using state of the art is completely off track, and uh, and it's not actionable, obviously. So you need to, well, you need to work on on, on top of it and make it actionable. Um, so then that's my last slide uh, on the on the open research question. So so machine learning experts they need to um, they, they do not buy the data knowledge mapping. So so that that's where another issue that that we have between combining the two communities. Uh, there's no agreement on what an explanation is. There should be more work on that. Uh, there's no formalism on on explanation. So there's more and more work on that, but not much. Uh, limited work on machine learning modules, composability, so how you compose them and maybe compose them with semantic models. Uh, there's no work on describing and representing models, so in a much more human representation way. So a model is doing something, but can you combine those those and then and then do uh, interesting work by combining them? Uh, well, this integral goal representation, it's, it's a big deal. And, and there's no work that seriously address the problem of quantifying the grade of comprehension of an explanation for human. You'll see a lot of work when I mentioned that they try to evaluate the accuracy of the explanation, but the comprehension of the explanation is, is much less work. So, so I think the, there's lots, lots of research challenges along those lines. So, so, so that's concluded my talk. So I hope uh, uh, you, you learned something from what I presented. Uh, it's a very interesting area. It's very applied now those days uh, because of the ethical part, uh, the responsibility part, and explanation I, is a very really odd topic. I, I think, Freddie, we learned we were learned really a lot from your talk. Uh, there is a few questions out there. I will go to a first question that came in fairly early in your talk. Um, um, it is a question by Milena, and she says, I think that ethic questions are crucial. Can you say more about you what you think about that? Oh, oh yeah, it definitely, it's definitely crucial. And you see more and more tech companies 
they, 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 they try to fill the gap between ethical. So, so if you look at uh, well, Google, Twitter, and all of those tech companies, they well, they see the harm that has been done to to people. Uh, so they try to fix it, and they and you see tools. So that is, we have the Google What If tool. Uh, you have the IBM 360 uh, on on fairness. So fairness and ethical is is very it, it, well. It, it's something that need to be it's something that need to be addressed, and, and and people are aware of it. And you see much more work on that. And and if you look at proposition available now, you have very bigger groups getting uh, getting attention on that. So it's uh, and, and and especially given our time. Yeah. With what happened in our society, it's 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 more and more it's more and more important. So and it it's just that the we reach a level of technology and and maturity and and autonomy or, or, or autonomous part of those systems that mm -hmm. ethical part is, is crucial. So so that's yeah. something that needs to be differently addressed and that, that, that's crucial. And and critical okay. systems companies they do address this work. Uh, so so it's it, it, really a good point. Yeah. Good, thank you. Pinky tells you that she finds your presentation uh, very interesting. So uh, one compliment uh, is uh, is in the pocket. Um, let me go to a next question by Imdat, who probably, if there were a competition for most questions asked, probably Imdat would be the winner. Um, and he asks, would the requirement of explainability make the models more data hungry? Can you say anything about that, uh, Freddy? Uh, so, well, they, I mean, if we, if, well, if you look at the machine learning field, well, all machine learning, they are, they are heavily data angry. So explanation, uh, it, it's basically finding some kind of subset of features or subset of data that could be responsible. So uh, I think the, the larger data that you have, the, 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 well, the more data angry that you will be anyway and getting the explanation. It's it might be tricky in those in those cases because you have lots of different um, mm -hmm. lots of different ways. So, mm -hmm. but I think at the end it's a, it's it's kind of an optimization task. But you try to do and search. Uh, so, and, and sometimes the explanation is even not in the data. So I think the 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 use case I show where you you need to embed uh, well you you solve a computer vision task uh, and and to get the explanation you need to look at the the DBpedia part and maybe further than that. So you need to extract more and more and more information. So, and, and the reason why is because mm -hmm. we don't really know what might please the person. Some persons might need different personalizations and that information might be needed even further in understanding the person and getting more data about the user. So so I think it's still about getting more and more data about the context and the and the task uh, to get the right the right one. So it's, it's, it's a good question and a good concern. Okay, thank you. Uh, another a few compliments came in in the in the chat. Um, I think uh, probably the organization will send them to you later, but a, a lot of compliments in the chat for your talk. Uh, I will be uh, going to the last question right now. It is one by Hassan Abu Rashid. And he says, when providing explanations to users, we enable them of understanding the output of the algorithm. Do you think, as a manufacturer, that users will eventually become able to decide what should be changed in the algorithm based on that explanation if they do not like the output of the course? Oh yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a good point. So so well, I mean, presentation of explanation is crucial, and we have been working with people that consume our explanation. Uh, they they were they were good from a technical perspective, but people uh, didn't. Well, well, they didn't. Well, it was not presented in a good way. So, if it's not presented in a good way, they won't. They will. They, they they won't make use of it, or they won't give you any feedback. So, so that's why having the use the user and the human in the loop, it's it's crucial, and it's crucial particularly if you want to engage them, and uh, if you you want to engage them, and you want somehow to give influence on on what they could give you as a feedback, because as I mentioned, it's not a one shot. You want the human to to uh, to to digest the explanation, and they would you want them to give feedback on what needs to be changed, or maybe they have a task that they try to solve, and with this particular task, uh, they they have particular objectives, and they may want to tune the model in a way on the others, and by providing the explanation, they 
uh, by analyzing the explanation, they should be provided this, this information that then they can, or we can do it for them, adapt the model accordingly. And maybe it's about ethical issues. So if you provide the right explanations and you un they understand you have a, a bias towards different population, and if you provide in the right way, then the human may say, well, well it's not correct. That needs to be changed for this population. And if you provide this pro correct explanation on why it has been end up this way, then you can solve the problem in the right direction, which, uh, just, rather than just trying to do a really small fix. So, so yeah. So presentation is crucial, and uh, and and you and you you may want the human to influence the directions if it's along the lines of some ethical, obviously ethical uh, directions. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So. Th Thank you for now, uh, Freddy Lecouet. Um, as always, I will do what the other participants can't because they are at the other end of the world. So I will applaud you for your presentation. Thank you so much, Freddy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.